Thanks for coming here, the Quirt on the Street. You are listening to WQRD. I am your drive time, power hour, nonstop, rock block, top 10 chart host, Vince. And uh, uh, this is your pilot here. Uh, we're about to take off, and I just wanted to check in and let you know that you're in for uh, a great episode 21 here. Uh, we're going to be cruising at about 69,000 feet. And um, it looks like when we land, it's going to be about 69 degrees uh, at your destination. So just be sure to sit back, relax, and enjoy your in-flight entertainment uh, provided to you by your uh, um, cabin host, Josh. And so let's get that entertainment, Josh. (laughs) I don't know how you come up with these things. (laughs) I like mean, if, if nothing if nothing else, our intros are good. <laughs> Arguable, but okay. <laughs> no, there's no arguing. They're good. Well, I guess thanks. I mean, you're making like uh, a whole I little have... skit every time. Yeah, man. I have I have a nice little uh, surprise for you this week too that I'm gonna send you after we're done uh, recording. Oh, well, that'll be fun. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I figured since we're, you know, giving ourselves a little more time to make some social media content, I would actually do some of that, provide you with it. Oh. So, so uh, hopefully we have that to look forward to. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Hmm. That is very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Fun fact of the week. Is that what you're yes. waiting for? Uh, that's, 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 that would be nice <laughs> to have at this point. So... This one's a little gross, but uh, did you know that the ma- the major percentage of household dust is made up of dead skin cells? I did know that. Yeah. It's it, to be fair, it's a lot of it is also hair, which is kind of just dead skin cells that stays together for a while. Yeah, that's just. But yeah, ugh, gross. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess so. I like the I like the idea that I am disintegrating omnipresent. Over time. I am omnipresent <laughs> in my house. You're just leaking. Everyone, yeah, all man. of us are just slowly leaking over time. It, it, you know what it is? It's like it's like a give and take, right? Like I can't leave the house without being covered in cat hair, so it's good to know that my cats can't exist without being covered in pieces of me. Also, this is true. Okay, so that a little. I, I have a second. Unsettling. I have a second, um, less gross one. Okay. for you that I wanted to share. Let's get the, it. The bumblebee. Did you know the bumblebee bat is the world's smallest mammal? Uh, no, I did not know that. What's what's this fucker look like? <laughs> he weighs between 0.05 and 0.07 ounces. That's not a lot. No, it's tiny. And it's a and it's a mammal. Oh, uh, apparently. How much does a, how much does a gallon of uh, bumblebee bat milk go for? <laughs> there you go. I just posted a picture of one of them in the. Okay. Ooh, new thread. That's uh, a that... whole human hand that it's sitting on. Yep. Uh, so its wing, wingspan is 5.1 to 5.7 inches. It just okay. Its actual head and body length is only between 1.15 and 1.3 inches. So that's where all the majority of the wow. weight is, and not very much of it. This thing's about the size of a murder hornet. Yeah, it looks like about the about the size of a thumb. Yep. I like them. You like? <laughs> well, you think they're cute? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I can't say that I think it's cute, but. Bats I wouldn't are, put it past are you. cool. I wouldn't put it past you. No, not this dude. See, look, I can't. I can't even think of something to describe what he looks like. Bats are not. Bats are unsettling. Yeah, they're weird. Did I ever tell you about I the like time them, I hit a bat? But, mm, no, but I have hit a bat also. Oh well, mine was quite quite interesting. So I was driving home uh, from Rome one night and. Uh-huh. I have my uh my sunroof open or my moonroof open, and you know how they have like the the wind guard or bug guard that pops up when you open them. Yeah. So I'm I'm going I'm going I'm driving along. All of a sudden I just hear a what, mm-hmm. and then I hear I'm like, oh no, did it get stuck? What the fuck is going on? So I make it all the way to a gas station. I pull in and park. Oh yeah, that man. It just oh no, it hit the guard and just like it killed it oh no it killed it but it was just (laughs) broken wings just stuck to the guard so i had to like take a snow brush and like Mm. brush him off of my car (laughs) so he was just mangled into the thing poor little guy yeah he was just looking for some bugs to eat well he ate something else 
And it was yeah. called a, a death a meal. A giant chunk of metal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So we are word on the street. Uh, each week, Josh over there and I pick one word from the 28 words generated from the puzzle word game Quirtle and uh, talk about whatever the hell we can based on them. So let's move into the meat of the episode. I go first this week. I chose the word alley. Mm, intriguing. Um, alley, I'm sure you probably see how I relate to this word, right? Like uh, I would have alley. known it even if you didn't have it yeah, in man. the doc. Alley, bowling alley. And it's just made me, made me start thinking about sports, like something that we haven't really touched on lately. So I figured we could do a pretty, I don't know, baseline level of what interests us. So I think I'm going to switch up the order of these questions here. I'm going to start off with your favorite sports to watch. Um, what, what are your favorite sports to watch? Because football. is it football? Just fo- Yeah, 100% football. Uh, yeah, this after makes sense. That- <laughs> after that it's weird because i don't watch a lot of t- regular season sports outside of football mm. um i would probably go it's- second hockey because the stanley okay. cup finals is just awesome and then playoff basketball okay now if you're just if you're just judging it based on how a sport feels to watch not necessarily like the playoffs because like these are all very high stakes things right that you're mm-hmm. talking about but just like how a sport feels to watch which one do you think is the best one to watch like a game a single game of because um uh, that so, may change your answer like football has a lot of downtime but i don't know so here's the th- it depends so for like me it's still football and i feel like football is because football is the most popular sport outside of you know soccer and like yeah. across the world as far as i know I'm pretty sure it's the second most popular still. Um, this would make sense to me. I'm not going to challenge you on it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's pos- positive 100%, but I'm almost hockey sure. Hockey may be up there. No, hockey's a lot less than you would expect. Yeah, but like, I, I get that, but but like there's some countries that are just like way into hockey, like Canada, Finland, Russia. Yeah, yeah, you're like, right. It's just, there's just nowhere near as much of a, of a following. But my main thing is... Sure. So for me, it's still football. And I think football gets way more dedicated, like not sports people fans than most sports because it has that dying time. Football's easier to watch because sure. it's it's harder to miss stuff because it's individual plays. You know what I mean? Whereas like hockey is there's there's plays, but you're really only stopping for a whistle. So it's constant right. pressure and it's hard if you don't know what's going on, it's hard to really understand what's happening. Same thing for basketball. It's like, there's just, there's a constant back and forth. And if you don't know what you're watching, it's easy to miss stuff and not understand what's happening. Yeah. Right. Whereas football is like, you know, down based and play based. So it, there's a lot of, a lot more time to take in what's happening on the field. Mm-hmm. All right. So I just looked up most popular sports in the world. I found two lists that are slightly different on the numbers. Mm-hmm. But agree on the order of these top 10 sports. Okay. Um, number one is soccer. Number two is cricket. Yeah. Uh, number three is basketball. Okay. Four basketball. is field hockey. That's surprising. See, I don't even like uh, I wasn't even counting those. I was counting major sports. I know, right? <laughs> Wait, maybe. Oh, it counts field hockey and hockey in the same. Oh, okay. That makes thing. more sense. So, so, that's, so it's just hockey's is number four uh five is tennis six is volleyball seven is table tennis eight is baseball and nine is combined american football and rugby Mm. Uh, and then 10 is golf and both of these lists even though they analyze these sports differently based on like viewership on tv popularity on the internet they're these are both weighted lists uh, they both come up with the same results. So it's kind of surprising. It's interesting. I know, but it makes sense. Like cricket's huge in India. I know that. Yeah. So like that's a billion people right there. Yeah. Well, I guess, guess I should. I mean, including children, more. I guess. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas like but there's it, like zero interest in. I mean, there's some interest, but there is very little interest in cricket in the U.S. in comparison. I know, right? It's 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 ridiculous. One of the podcasts I like, uh, Song Salad, they ju- they have done a couple episodes where they the random topic that they've gotten to make a song out of is cricket based. <laughs> and to an American mind, cricket is the most batshit 
off the wall, just like high stepping surrealistic sport. Yeah, that's weird. In existence. Like it's it's the weirdest thing in the world mm-hmm. to us. But uh I guess it's incredibly popular. Basketball makes sense though, as at number three. Yeah, there's um, just leagues everywhere. That's the thing. It's like Yep. Yep, exactly. Um so yeah, football. I get that. The downtime does make it interesting because there's time to like analyze plays, look back at replays, which is something that you don't always get until a commercial break with other sports, right? Yeah. That and I also feel like football breeds football has power positions or, you know, key positions or you root for yeah, a certain sure. player. Whereas like on basketball everyone's kind of important because you only have teams of mm. you know, five or or so, you know, you got the bench, but football, you have 11. Like, no, very few people are yeah. can name the starting offensive line for a team. I would, <laughs> basketball is not a great um, example of that because, like, you hear basketball just advertised as Steph Curry versus LeBron James or something, right? <clears throat> yeah, like but there's one... way more people that, like, there's less to follow. There's every, almost all of the roles are important because there's only, f- there's only five. It's only five v five. So it's there's five people on the floor at any given point in time. But I would say that you have to have a you have a deep bench, a workable. You have to have a workable team of like yeah eight or nine. So I mean that's that's opposed to football where there's eleven people on the on the field and you have to have a workable bench of fifteen or sixteen. But mm-hmm. well, I mean football teams they have a fifty three man roster. Yeah, but like. Not all those people ever play. No, but what uh, I'm saying is the chances I, of somebody knowing the starting right. left left outside linebacker on the Bears versus them knowing who is in each of the spots on their favorite basketball team is much yeah, higher. Yeah, I get that. I <laughs> One of the uh, woodworkers that I like on YouTube, I promise this relates, um, was like, I heard him say in a video today, like, yeah... As you guys know, probably know, like I used to play in the NFL. I'm like, what? I like look him up. I find his Wikipedia page. Don't don't get too excited. Oh, (laughs) it was like it was like he was signed as an undrafted player to this team before the season started. He was traded to the practice squad of this team before that season started. (laughs) He was traded to the practice squad of this in. He was, quote unquote, in the NFL for two years yeah he got put in for one play ever other than that he was on the practice squad of six different teams in <laughs> well no funny. five different teams he was on the pittsburgh steelers twice sounds like uh one of my friend's stepfathers got uh a two-week contract with this um i think it was the hornets i want to say hmm. did they start the in the Charlotte Hornets? Yeah. Have they moved at this point? Probably. I don't know. No, they're in Basketball Charlotte. teams move a lot. They're still in Charlotte. Um, yeah. I'm just looking to see when they started. Uh, yeah. It was in 88. So <clears throat> it was right at the end of the 80s. Like, I think he said it was 89 into 90. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, he got signed for a two week like contract for like 30 grand back then. And like, he practiced Jeez. like twice. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and got his 30 grand and that was it. Wow. I'm, uh, that I ain't co- a bad payday yeah. though. No, no. Um, kind of cool. Yeah. I would say for me, though, fav- my favorite sport to watch. Yeah, man, it's tough. I I really like watching like the precision sports. Um, I like watching bowling because I pretty much understand it. Yeah. So like there's a lot of small precision that goes into it and i like they have like very good filming so it's it's nice to see like slow motion of people doing that um i don't know i like i really like watching curling but uh such a dweeb i know right (laughs) curling is just so interesting you like you gotta give it a shot it's it's almost never on that's the problem that's the big problem with curling is that if it were on more i feel like it would get more popular but there's just you know it's huge like they have a yeah, huge no. curling club yeah i always wanted to go there but i always just drive by i don't know yeah you have to have a membership to even do anything there oh for real yeah 
I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But, it's all yeah. like it's all like member funded too. Like so like all the volunteers like mm-hmm. there are all like literally that, just volunteers. Nobody makes money off. Yeah. Um I guess of the major sports though, I think probably basketball is my favorite to watch on on TV. Mm-hmm. Just it's it's so easy to uh follow when it's on TV. Yeah. Um I also have a sort of secondary question to this which is what is your favorite sport to watch in person um and my answer to that is hockey like it's a small enough arena that you can when you're in the arena pay attention to everything that's happening but i don't think that hockey like translates to television as well as basketball does i would i would you know what that. i mean yeah so what's your favorite sport to watch in person hmm um probably still the same yeah yeah this makes I, sense like I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to it's talk actually you weird out your answer but so like uh I it kind of goes into your next que- or one of your other questions, but like football mm-hmm. is by far my most favorite to watch for sure, but basketball is my most favorite to play. That makes sense to me. So yeah, let's move into that. Yeah, that was my next question. Favorite to play basketball. Yeah, it's just easier to have like one you can play one on one. Oh so, yeah. So it's much yeah. more uh, available <laughs> to be able to sure. play it. You don't need a, a team. I mean, I guess you could play three on three football, but or even two on two, but yeah. Not as exciting. Yeah, N- NFL street style. Yeah. <laughs> Jump um, off walls, fucking <laughs> blow each other into the stands. Yep. But uh, basketball is just nice because, like I said, you can do one-on-one, but it's also in a team setting. Yeah. You can have a much bigger impact as an individual, I feel like, in a basketball game than in football. Like, football is much more of a... Yeah, sure. Of a, you know, a, a team-centric sport or of, like... No, you can just be dominant in basketball and take over a game. Yeah. I mean, that's for sure. If you're if you're a receiver on a football team and there's a particular like pass rusher that's really good on the other team, you have no cho- you have no chance if they get to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. It doesn't or if matter the quarterback who doesn't you, throw to you. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are personally going up against. If someone else who you have no contact with can ruin your day. Yeah. Well, it's even like like you would even try to make the argument that like, well, quarterback has a ton of effect on it. But if the offensive line can't give him enough time to throw and he gets hit before he even has time to play on his feet. Yep. It doesn't matter. Or it's like, I don't know. It's just it's I think it's easier to have an individual impact in basketball, which makes playing it as an individual much more appealing in in like pickup. Yeah. Um, I, I saw this TikTok that was like a, a woman just like baffled by her husband's like pickup basketball league. <laughs> she was like, she was like, so wait, you just go and like random strangers just like pick you. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, what, what if they don't like you? And he's like, I don't know. It's never, it's never happened. It's never come up. <laughs> She's like, okay. So you get on the court and you just like play. And then like the team that wins, like they go up against the next team. Right. And he's like, yeah. She's like, I don't understand. What if, the team that loses doesn't want to leave the court. And he's like, ah, it's never happened. It's like, <laughs> yeah, there's like unwritten rules. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, I you'll... used to play all the time. So that's one thing I do miss when I lived in North Carolina. I don't know if I ever talked about this before or not, but um, we had uh, my boss's like parents church that they went to mm-hmm. had a, a basketball court, like a complete indoor basketball dome. And uh, we would rent it. Hell yeah. Three times a week. Uh, five dollars a head like they didn't really need, oh, wow they didn't really need money i think it was more to just kind of make sure the quality of people that were coming in yeah um, that makes sense so yeah it was five dollars a head and we would play from like eight o'clock until 11 most nights uh-huh. um and we'd have anywhere between eight and 15 people depending on the night um and we did that three times a week for about six months before like you know life happened and people started falling off and not coming or you know, we'd show yeah. up and there'd be five of us. And it's like, okay, well, this is, you know, we play for an hour and get bored because not enough for like a full court game. So, but yeah, I, like I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I used to play at the Hilltops in Frankfurt yeah. all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I'm not the type of person that I think could go do that, but I would love to. I mean, it's definitely, I don't know if I would just like walk into a random YMCA and do it, but. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like being a, like, I set it up. So, like, yes, it was the random church basketball court, but it was all people I know or 
people of people I knew. Yeah, sure. So it was like after the first few times, you know, you know them all. I had, all, I had everybody that ever attended. I had their phone number because it was like, you know, we're we have seven hit up everybody that's ever been. We need one more. Come on. Get over here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah, I miss that actually. I would, I do, would really like to actually be able to get back to doing that. It's super. I'm fun. sure there's people so, such doing it. You should for you so much. You yeah. should like get in touch with some of my brother's friends. I'm, I would not put it past one of them to be in some sort of pickup basketball league. Yeah, I'd have, um, to, uh, I'd have to give it a give a little bit of training before I go back to that. I don't know if I can. Do yeah, that. right. That was actually the crazy thing. So like, I hadn't really played a lot when we started, and. I don't know if you've ever experienced this or not, but like when you don't run for a very long time. So like, yeah, it had been like years since I like had to run, run. Yeah. And then I went from, you know, not running at all, like really running in like probably two or three years. Cause like you're not playing sports. When do you run? Right. And dude, my knees were so bad. Like I had never yeah. had that kind of soreness in my legs before. And it I was really, bo- I ended up having to get, uh, the only thing that helped me is like, I was able to get KT tape and tape around them. Oh, and okay. use that to keep like, basically give some of the muscles stability for the time where yeah. they were like getting sure. used to getting used to that kind of wear and tear again. <laughs> Yep. I um haven't experienced fatigue like that, but there's been a few times where I'm like, I got to shed a few pounds and I'll start just running uh-huh. um, to lose weight. And there hasn't been a single time that I have tried just running for fitness that I haven't developed shin splints <laughs> after about a week and a half. Yeah. I don't know. My legs just ain't made for that. No, I, nobody's are. Running is just for majority of people running is just not good. Yeah, I know. Like my sister has had so many problems with like she's a avid runner and she's had hip problems from it and shin mm, splints man. and all kinds of feet issues and <laughs> rolled ankles, anything that you can think of that can go wrong from it. I'm sure has happened at some point or another. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah. Um, but uh now did I say mine? Favorite sport to play is bowling. No. Yeah, it's going to be bowling. <laughs> it's going to be bowling. Um, I don't know. It's just the, the sport that I'm best at. Yeah. Um, and like, it's the type of sport that people like to put down. Like, ah, you're just wherever. It's so, it's so easy. Just throw the ball down the lane. But like, and like, sure. Bowling's you could be, uh, for me. I don't know. If you, if you put regular time into it, you could be a 150 average bowler. I think anybody could be a 150 average bowler. Yeah, you're probably right. Like a season worth of practice. You could probably do that. I think that's the but, biggest holdback for bowling is like you need to go to a special place to do it. Yeah, sure. Sure. It's always good weather inside the bowling alley though. That's true. I just mean for like me, like like I said, I'm I would say I'm the worst out of that. Like I think that's probably why I enjoy playing sports as much. Like kinda like mm-hmm. the wow factor. Nobody expects me to be as solid at sports yeah, as, sure. as I am. <laughs> um just, you know, I'm larger than most people especially like on the basketball court it was that was yeah. the funniest part it was like one guy would always make a remark because i'm i was always open and they're like how is the biggest fucking yeah. guy on the court the one that nobody can keep track <laughs> of he's always wide open <laughs> it's like yeah yeah it, you know i think that like athletic ability also translates across a lot better than people expect it to yeah it does like like i like I'm saying, like 150 average bowler is probably like typical, but like that gap between a 150 average and a 200 average bowler is enormous. And then anything above 200 is like exponentially harder to carry. So for someone like Terrell Owens, who is like a 200 average bowler, like that people are like, oh, wow, he can bowl too, but athletic ability translates. Like he's just a he's just a good athlete. Same with uh Chris yeah. Paul. Chris Paul is like a two ten average bowler or something like that. He went in the off season, he's in a bowling league and he's like one of the best people in it, I think. And just one of those things that people don't really understand. And then they see people like that do it and they're like, ah, it must be easy if these people who don't really not do even, it are good at it. It's not like, even eh. close. Uh, I'm trying like to even Ladanian Tomlinson's like a 
like a 170 or 180 average or something like that. So, so it's it's I'm gonna send this interesting to, to me. Um, okay. Funny enough, uh, an ex professional Call of Duty player who mm-hmm. also happens to be, he's a coach for one of the Call of Duty teams right now. He's also part of the PBA. <laughs> yeah. Got two titles too. Dang. Yep. Yeah, that ain't bad. No, right? He's not too not too shabby. Damn, he cashed in eleven times. He had a he had a title year in twenty eighteen. Yep. That was his year. Mm-hmm. Although, man, those those prize money, the prize money in PBA is just not there. <laughs> no. No, you know, two that's titles. The, that's, that's crazy. It's like two titles made twelve seven. <sighs> he cashes eleven times and makes twelve thousand dollars that's yeah and like you literally could win one call of duty tournament and make like yeah 10 times that yeah i know man that's crazy that sucks but the crazy thing is so like yeah he's a coach now for one of the biggest call of duty teams he was he's an ex call of duty pro Mm -hmm. plays in the pba and then he also was like really good at golf yeah that makes sense to me golf and bowling are very similar um like just mechanically what your right arm is doing in golf is extremely similar to what your right arm is doing in bowling. And a lot of the like adjustments that you would make in bowling at a high level are the same adjustments that you would make in golf. So it's it's a very similar thing to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's so uh-huh. in the the optic like headquarters like in that building. There's also I don't know if you've ever heard of Good Good Golf, but it's a a golfing brand that's popped up in the last few years that is co-owned by hacks who owns who's also a part owner in optic okay. and they have an entire like golf simulator thing in, yeah. in there so he's like i go i'll go hit nine you know go play nine holes on the golf simulator yeah. and then start his day of coaching <laughs> i would love a golf simulator that would be the coolest fucking thing and i install one in the uh yeah. the new uh-huh. house when you build it yeah and the, in the dream home yeah in the dream home underground Um, in a giant cave yeah right (laughs) definitely in a cave that i built next to my house uh (laughs) that doesn't have any ground above it Uh, (laughs) so i could just walk to it um so the next question is your favorite weird sport um now these are like non-mainstream sports like uh i guess curling is like the cutoff for this. Anything weirder, less popular than, say, curling. Can it just be controversial? Sure. Esports. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. By far. You know I what, though? I, I don't get the whole people wanting to keep it out of sports. There, there are people competing no. against each other. The, the thing is, like, there have been plenty of... There's plenty of evidence that mental sports are as taxing as physical sports. Um, uh, there was one particular study that I, maybe not one particular study, maybe like an aggregate of studies that showed that chess players burn as many calories in like a tournament over several days or whatever. They burn as many calories as like a soccer player or something ridiculous where people are just running up and down the court. Like your brain uses energy and yeah. is to your body it's no different than your legs using energy true yeah i mean that's they they were all up and i mean and my thing is it's been in the x games you know esports been, yeah yep. i didn't know that but that's yeah. that two makes di- sense to me two, two different years yeah yeah sure um and i mean it's people competing against each other i, I mean not everybody can do it it's not easy no and, i mean we're no. even seeing like colleges and stuff have scholarships and you know i mean collegiate countries. rocket league teams and south korea like has national esports teams yep mm-hmm. i mean it's it's not it's you know what's funny is it's it's almost like x games is the first step toward like mainstream acceptance because yeah people said the same shit about skateboarding and snowboarding mm-hmm and then the X Games pick them up. People see like, oh no, these these, these folks are, are like, yeah, they're they're not doing what I think they're doing. <laughs> they're built diffy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> built built. Different. They can crack eggs between their biceps. <laughs> they can squeeze watermelons between their thighs. Yep, yep. P- punch watermelons, pull them apart. Um, yeah, no, that that makes sense. What is your um? What what would you say is the most hype 
esport to watch? Like the are you uh, like it is it MOBAs because the per- they have a the largest person. audience or? So League of Legends is definitely the largest audience. Yeah, but you have to like MOBAs. Um, outside right. of that, Valorant has done a very good job of capturing an exciting. I still game think for people to watch. I know that you told me like it's a tactical shooter, but whenever I hear Valorant, I I literally just think that it's a hero shooter. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think of it Overwatch. as Overwatch Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know why. Yeah, having that that I would say is probably the next most exciting. I mean, I, for me, the most exciting is Call of Duty, but it's not the most popular. Sure. Um, that's just because I'm so invested into it. You know, it's crazy the thing. Yep. Like, um, you know, Nate Shot, who is now the owner of Hundred Thieves, and they've been around since what I think 2017, late 2017, early 2018 when they started. I, mm-hmm. I've been following him slash the Call of Duty since like 2011 wow so over you know over 10 years is is he still playing no he's been retired for a while but uh okay. actually so crim six has been playing for i believe just as long or close okay. to it. who is the tom brady of esports the person that has been playing for the longest who is still crim relevant six, crim six right now crim six yeah um he has been since Let's see when did when did he come in? I'll say that Yammer Yager is also a a uh, nominee for the namer of this award. Someone who's just been playing for so long that you can't believe they're still good. <laughs> so he has been his first like well known team. Mm-hmm. I would say would be back then would be Quantic, and that was back in 2012, and then Complexity in 2012, and that's when it really started. So he's been in for 10 years. Uh, him and him and Scum, that's... but him and skump which are so they've been about the same amount of time but he <laughs> is the most winning call of duty player ever crim six has crim six yeah has like 40 tournament wins a damn or something close to that he's he is only a few behind ogre too to having the most tournament wins on council my god i know nothing about anything ogre two is one of like is is the goat in halo okay so yeah, I mean. yeah, I have, I have no reason to doubt that. Uh, <laughs> I wish I were more up on this stuff. This, I just, I don't know. Um, for me, weird sport. My favorite weird sport. Uh, <laughs> Nicole and I were out at a restaurant not that long ago, like a few weeks ago, and we were watching the cornhole world championships. Cornhole was exciting and fun to play too. Yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. This it's one dude. It's crazy how good people are. Yeah, it was like there were several rounds where it was just like bags in the hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just yeah. all just in. Airmail. Just. And then there was one dude who was just shitting on everyone else. Like. <laughs> He would he would block the hole so that then they would have to like sink it. Right. And then as soon as they didn't, he would knock their bag off and then knock all of his bags in. Like it was it was absolutely ridiculous. The precision that these dudes had. And Mm -hmm. I'm I'm constantly going, why aren't these guys playing another sport, too? Like this is a precision sport. How how could you not translate this into into something else something that you get you you know more well known or more money or whatever like i looked up every single one of the guys that i saw on there and none of them did anything else other than cornhole i'm like yeah why aren't you like making a sports career like there were several bowlers who were back in the heyday when it was more popular more profitable who were also on the horseshoes like tour or whatever yeah like this is a sport that could translate into other sports i don't i don't under i didn't understand why people weren't people who are so good at it wouldn't try to do other stuff but yeah that was incredible to watch yeah i guess it probably just depends on like time like yeah i guess you know what if they're not making enough from full-time cornhole to even support themselves and they have a real job then they can't do boat can't do you know another sport with that or i guess it just depends on financial situations i wondered how much they made but i i never actually looked it up um the last thing that i'm going to talk about is uh the ocho you know about the ocho right like obviously he comes from the dodgeball movie right 
Yeah. But you know that ESPN does the Ocho every August 8th? Yeah, yep. Or not every August 8th, I guess. They did it in 20... Well, I don't know. They did it in 2017, then there's no information until 2020, and then this year they did it again. Anyway, um, I just want to run down some of the... Some of the... Um, Sports. Sports that they play. That they play because yeah, they're, they're fucking they're awesome. Good. They're good. Uh, 20, 2020, they started off strong with lawnmower racing. <laughs> I don't know what it means. I imagine that. Is it like riding lawnmowers or is it is it I, like you just I get a know. lawnmower going and let it and let it go? I don't know. I'm about to find out. Yeah, you look these up as I as I go down the list. Uh, the next one that catches my eye. This is one that I actually know about. <laughs> yeah. It's legitimately like an Indy 500 with riding long. Oh my god, it's incredible! Um, the next one that I want to talk about is one that I actually know about. The one that I watched before ESPN picked it up. Um, originally, it was called the Marble Olympics. The Marble Olympics. Yes, it was a dude. It's a dude on. Oh my god, this thumbnail is so good. Just for the <laughs> lawnmower racing. Yeah. Um, the Marble Olympics is a sporting event that a guy sets up using like tracks and like sand and stuff to let marbles teams of marbles compete against each other huh. um he does like the one meter dash where he just sets four marbles down a track and see who is the fastest and then he'll do a few runs of it and it's so good the like production quality on it and the announcing on the marbles is so good that you end up getting invested in marbles. You like you <laughs> pick a team and then you watch and you're like rooting for them. The these marbles that have no autonomy and you're just like, ah, they didn't try hard enough. Dang it. <laughs> Why didn't this marble give it its all? Oh man, these guys are really slacking this year in this event. Oh man. It's I so good. I will I'll send you the link to the uh youtube channel i think he had to change the name of it when espn put it on yeah because the olympics are notoriously litigious um so i can't remember what he changed the name to marble league i think but yeah it's it's very interesting to watch i'm gonna um, sh- i'm gonna share one with you okay that it's not in the ocho at all it's a complete underground circuit okay <laughs> but i watched them all the time, and I can't stop laughing when I do. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this video is age-restricted. That's all right. I, I shared the exact time when it starts. Well, it doesn't It doesn't work on the em- embed in Discord because it's age-restricted. Oh, yeah. It'll just have to open. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to know, like, it was like, you know what? Let's just have wheelchair boxing. He's making so many noises. Yeah. Oh my god. How long? Oh my god. This is long. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you got to think. It's hard to really get a lot of force behind. They don't take rounds. They just go until one of them stops. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) That's ridiculous. Like I can imagine, this is how they got the uh, movement and motion mechanics for Fight Night. (laughs) Just by wheelchair boxing. Yeah, (laughs) this is what it looks like when you're up close in the clinch in Fight Night games. Yeah, right. (laughs) Just like never hitting anything, just missing. (laughs) Oh God. Uh, So yeah, I shared in in Discord the link to the channel that does the Marble Olympics or the Marble League. Yeah, I have um, it pulled up. When you're just like looking for something to watch, you're bored with whatever else you're doing, just pull up like the marble uh, a single marble league playlist and just watch the season through. The Marble League. All I could think I mean, of is the Marvel League. I just think of marbles that are yeah. all, all all colored like yeah. the different Marvel characters. Yeah, yeah. You got a purple and green Hulk Marvel, you got an orange and red Iron it, Man Marvel. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. These ones are even better. There are teams like the O Rangers. They're the orange marbles are the Orangers. Um <laughs> the snowballs, which are the white marbles. Um mm-hmm. the cat's eyes, which are the cat's eyes marbles. Uh, they're very good. You you will inevitably and unexplainably get attached to one of these teams and be rooting for them. <laughs> 
That reminds me of, uh, have you seen some of the TikTok races? So the, no. uh, <laughs> there's a guy who will, uh, has a treadmill and he like, it's not really a race, I guess. It's to who could stay is alive this, the longest with the Is with this the Hot Wheels guy? Well, oh, he does it with balls. does it with pool balls, <laughs> like keep the which pool ball can stay on the longest. They do it with Hot Wheels too, but the one I watched recently is the pool balls. Well, while scrolling through TikTok, have you ever come across the Beyblade guy? Yes, I see him on live every so often. He just Beyblade runs Beyblade, away. yeah, just yep. Beyblade in a way. I see that, and <laughs> so, I still see some of the. I forget what the name of the show was, but it was the. Remember the robot fighting show? Oh, uh, BattleBots. BattleBots, yeah. I see that stuff all the time on there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, But yeah, the, so the one other one that I'll, well, one other one that I'll talk about and then I'll just run down a list is um, the Golden Tea World Championship, which I would love to watch this if there's a VOD on the, the internet. Golden I'm probably going to watch this. Golden Tee is the golf game that you see in arcades with the little rolly ball. <laughs> I would love to watch that. This I fucking love that game. Need a California games. Yeah, right. Tournament. They did they do have Tetris on here too. But this year they ran the Ocho again. And I'm just gonna run down the schedule because they run it for 24 hours. So it started at midnight. Um with the 2022 Corgi races. I guess it's like horse races, but with Corgis instead of horses. That's way cooler than horses. It's so cool. Um, the evolution of cliff diving. The story <laughs> of spike ball. Ooh, the USA Pickleball Championships. I think pickleball is like a local Rochester sport. That's interesting. Okay. Um, Tiny Meekers. Baddest bencher on the planet. I don't know what that is. It seems like a uh, feature. 2021 Karuna belt sander races race belt sanders like that uh the bed races don't know what that is be looking it up afterwards the riverstone skipping competition um world air hockey championships world table hockey championships new swarm fling golf classic red bull paper wings i'm assuming that's a paper plane competition (sighs) kickball invitational World Axe Throwing Championship, Wiffle Ball Championship, Quad Ball Invitational, Chase Tag. Wow. This was a lot of sports. The Pogo Palooza. <laughs> Just people pogoing everywhere. 7 p.m. Slippery Stairs. Yeah, I saw That's that it. one. Slippery That's stairs. it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Who can fall down the most stairs at one time? <laughs> Just. <laughs> just running you're just lathering yourself up in soap and just we, running we oiled up these stairs and we got the village idiot from 25 different small towns from around america and we're gonna see who can run up the most steps before falling flat on their face let's go Boom. <laughs> there they go up oh, they all fell so nope not not rochester uh bainbridge island washington in 1965. Really? That's surprising. There's a big uh, Joel Pritchard, a big Bill ball. Bell, and Barney McCallum of Bainbridge yeah. Island, Washington. There's a uh, big pickleball contingent around here. One of my customers has a pickleball court painted on their driveway. <laughs> and Sky's father is in a pickleball league. So, hmm. Sky, maybe uh, let your father see this pickleball championship. Um, What else I got? I got nothing else. Oh. Well, hopefully you might have a loose end. Do I have a loose end? I feel like I did, but now I don't. Well, about this, I'll give my give a loose end. It's not really a loose end. It's just a, a little snippet story in between our words. But, All right. Uh, I bought a box of O's for the first time in a long time after we talked Ooh. about that. And oh, boy, did they slap. They lived up to it. They didn't oh, you man, put they them did on a pedestal. Be, I mean, no, not even close. My gu- yeah. My gums... Did not thank me afterwards. Yeah, man. I mean, I, it is the crunchiest, most like granular cereal. Although, <laughs> like it, it just destroys maybe stuff. I've been working on this theory. If they cut up your gums in the top of your mouth so much, maybe instead of flossing, you could just eat O's. They'll toughen that up your gums. I don't. I don't know. There's never been a study on it, so maybe it does work. Okay. So just instead of flossing. I just take a, a mouthful of O's in the morning. Yes. Oh, I'll have to try that. Yeah, I. I uh, yeah. 
bought a box of those and a box um, of cinnamon toast crunch and i was like you know what i need cereal Mm -hmm. i i had a uh i had a cereal day this week too had a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch and then frosted flakes very good what a good choice yep i just had the boxes because i'm good like that (laughs) so Josh's so, word. My word this week is gorge. And it's a gorge. perfect perfect transition from that snippet into my word. Because I thought about gorging yourself and eating too much. Okay. So I thought we could talk about our favorite foods. All different types. Uh-huh. The things that we can just eat endlessly. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. So what is your... Do you have a specific just food or item that you can just crush like you love it so much you can just keep eating it and it's hard for you to put it down homemade hard shell tacos yeah i don't know what it is about those little fuckers but i could eat you could just put them down six or seven i could eat six or seven of them (laughs) but you put them in a shop style you can only eat two yeah like i I ordered tacos (laughs) at a restaurant like three is my limit but the like Ortega or like old El Paso like kit that you buy and you make like a pound of beef. I can eat half those fucking shells in a single sitting. <laughs> He's just crushing them. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's so hard to not keep going back to. Yeah. It's like, uh, but also fries. Like there have been several occasions where I have been at a restaurant just like munching on my fries and then I have to like push the plate away to Nicole and be like, take these from me, get these out of my sight. <laughs> I will not stop. I, I will continue eating these as long as we sit here. So Red Robin is your uh, kryptonite? <laughs> no, because I will stop when it's when empty in front of me. Like, I won't ask for more. But if they're there, I'm going to take a bite of them <laughs> every so often. And then one bite leads to two, and then two leads to four, and then four leads to me eating all the rest of the fries that I got. Hmm. I don't blame you there. Mine, How about you? One of mine is white cheddar grooves Cheez-Its. Yeah, I get that. I could crush the whole fucking box in one sitting. And they're just um, so good. They're not exactly the same, but there are big goldfish now. Yep, I've seen those. Those are so good. Yeah, it's like you feel like you're getting more. <laughs> nah, you de- I definitely feel like I'm getting less. Oh, I feel like I was getting more. Even though it's I know like, I'm not. It's like I'm eating four goldfish, so like I'm just like munching on them for a bit, as long as I would eat regular goldfish for it. And then I look in the bag and it's half gone. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but it, it's like if I'm taking a handful of goldfish every single time. Yeah. Yeah. But they are very good. So good. Yeah. That's definitely one of mine. Um, soft, Ooh, before, like chewy cookies. You know, okay. Hold on. I thought of a loose end. Mm-hmm. And this reminded me of it. Um, cheese reminded me of it because <laughs> <laughs> I just made a bunch of like syrups and juices for my bar, um, just to try them out because I don't know why I felt like being productive or something. But one of them, the grapefruit juice called for MSG. Um, so I like went crazy trying to find MSG in the store. Right. And today I found it. Uh, it's not billed as MSG because people have like an aversion to MSG. So they call it, they call it flavor enhancer. Yeah. Um, but MSG is, so I, okay. So I tasted it and it, what it, what MSG tastes like is the taste that you have in your mouth after the taste of cheese goes away. Oh, okay. Like, like you put cheese, like you put a piece of cheese in your mouth, right? And you taste the cheese and then. After that taste has like faded a little bit, you're left with the taste of MSG. Oh, that's what it tastes like. So I would salty cream for me is what I would think it would taste like. It's not exactly salty, though. Hmm. It's just cheesy. It's it's whatever. It's the sixth flavor that people talk about umami. Right. But why I bring this up is I would hazard a guess that if you make yourself an apple pie with msg in it you probably get the same thing as putting a slice of cheese on apple pie hmm. i'll bet you that if you I mean, if you I'd ever to try if it, you ever feel like know. making yourself an apple pie and you don't feel like buying cheese for some reason these are two i'm separating these impulses like here at the grocery store why don't you just buy cheese but put msg in some apple pie and i bet you get what you get from Eating cheese or apple pie. Maybe. 
I don't know, because normally I don't eat them like together. You eat it like you take eat the apple pie and then you cut the taste of it with the sharp cheddar. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it would work. I'm I'm telling you, I like I like put my finger in this thing and like touch it to my tongue. Just like, what does this taste like? I expected it to be salty. It's mono sodium glutamate, right? Like it's <laughs> it's sodium. Yeah. But it was just cheese. <laughs> my brain my brain told me cheese. I bought a bottle of cheese. And I'm like, it doesn't taste like cheese. It tastes like the idea of cheese. <laughs> it tastes like a cheese it's a cheese light bulb above someone's head. It's it's the <laughs> weirdest thing. But <laughs> you know when the it's items the- in a cloud above a cartoon character's heads when they're thinking about it, it tastes like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> It's like someone's in the other room screaming, cheese, cheese. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, huh, I know what that yeah. tastes like. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, yeah, cheese. <laughs> the cheese, it's over there. Uh-huh. That's funny. Okay. That was my loose end and my derailment. <laughs> MSG. <laughs> MSG, yeah. Uh, soft cookies is another one. Mm, yeah, sure. So like, uh, uh huh. Is makes is making is making like all these different soft baked cookies now that you can buy like prepackaged. Hmm. Oh man, and they have a uh, mint mint chocolate ones. Oh brother, Ooh. it's like a a a gooey chewy thin mint. That oh, sounds interesting. They're so good. Next time you're at the store, look for them. They come in like a blue package. I'm not sure if I would care for that. They have other flavors. I, they have peanut I, butter. Well, no, it it's the it's the texture. I like me a crunchy crispy cookie i like it occasionally but a chewy one is uh man there's just something like just gives that fresh out of the oven feel you're looking at the shelf you see the three mainline chips ahoy in front of you chewy regular chunky rank them regular chunky oh, okay chewy oh you don't like the chewy chewy chips, chips ahoy. suck okay in my opinion they they like they take like it's weird. They taste like fake chewy. Okay, sure. And so, and I don't, it just—I don't know if that makes sense, but it just—they're just—they're just chewy to be chewy. That it doesn't give me the sensation of being like a fresh cookie. Gotcha. But these Pillsburys do. Yes. Wait, wait. You're saying Pillsbury? Are they like pre-made, pre-packaged, or yes. are, is it like okay? So it's not like a dough that you have to bake. Well, right on the shelf, right next to Oreos. Mm. Yeah, maybe I will look at look for them then. So they have ch- chocolate, uh, yeah, mint chocolate chip or mint, yeah, mint chip. They have peanut butter. They have a uh, sugar cookie, chocolate chip, and mm. uh, funfetti. Okay, something like that. They're all, I mean they're all really good. Yeah, but the mint chip they ones sound are just oh man, yeah, probably they slap. Uh, I put it this way: I bought them once. I bought the mint ones once. Right? Uh huh. I bought I bought a box of them every time I've been in Walmart since. <laughs> and after I bought them the first time, the next time I bought one of every kind to try. I was like, I, I need to know. I mean, they're all there and yeah. they're all good. Yeah. Yeah. But, maybe but, I'll maybe I'll look for them. See if see if Wegmans has them next time. I'm, I'm in there. Maybe I'll buy myself a, a box. Hey, I feel like I need some stuff to snack on in the house. Right. But also, I should never have anything to snack on because Cause then, cause then you'll snack on them. Cause then I'll snack on them. Yeah, that's that's the constant struggle. It's like, yeah, you want snacks because when you want something, you want something, and then when you don't have anything, you're pissed. But then yeah. if you buy it, you're gonna eat it, and then it's gone, and then you don't have anything anyway. Mm-hmm. It's man, ice cream for me is that type of thing. Yeah, I uh like special ice creams. I like I love me an ice cream sandwich. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing about ice cream sandwiches that I found is. <laughs> They get not exactly soggy. They get softer as you keep them. Yep. Like something about the store freezers keeps the s- sandwich cookie like a little firmer. And in your home freezer, by the time you're on to the whatever, uh, 12th ice cream sandwich, it's just like soft. Could just be shelf life though. Like, And I don't mean shelf life like it goes bad. I mean like uh, they go through enough of them that you're always pulling one that they just put in. Yeah, true. So like they're restocking yeah. it. So like you might have them for two weeks, and it's coming. You're straight never. Off the deep you're never. Yeah, you're never getting a two week old one mm-hmm. on, the, on the front of the shelf that you're pulling off. Yeah, sure, sure. 
That would be my guess. Yeah, probably. Uh, what else you got here? So what's a random food that you love that others are not fond of? Like something uh, you enjoy that's not like a super popular thing to like. I think I have an answer for this, but uh, you go first here. I mean, olives. I love black olives. Yeah. Love them. And black licorice. Uh, I absolutely black love Black licorice is, is for sure for you. Yeah. Although, I the last time we talked about black licorice... I had that drink that was uh, absinthe and almond. Yeah. I'm having that again tonight, and you really do have to try this. It's very good. I will. I will definitely uh, try it. Because absinthe is mostly licorice flavored. Yeah. I mean, it explains why I love Jaeger so much. I mean, that tastes I always a lot forget, like... I always forget what. Oh, I always forget that Jaeger is licorice flavored. Yep. Yeah, it's so I don't know good. What I, th- I don't know what I think it is. I don't ever remember that it is licorice. You know, I, I wish I still had the video. I don't know if I do. I might. But when uh, when I was moving back from North Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, the last night at the bar down there, we were all hanging out. And one of the guys just decided that there was a guy there who was just hammered. And he bought an entire round for the whole bar. Wow. Or just a round of shots for everyone in the bar. So, like, the bartender knew that it was my last night. And, mm-hmm. like, at this, it was 1.30 in the morning at this point. So, like, seven of my friends were like, we don't want a shot. We don't want a shot. <laughs> oh, no. So we don't want a shot. So, he just pours eight shots into a glass. Just eight shots of Jaeger in a cup. And just hands it to me. And I just pounded the whole thing. <laughs> brutal <laughs> he was like you're a psychopath i'm like i like black licorice it tastes good yeah yeah it's funny that this is like a thing like people people love shots that are supposed to taste bad jägermeister um i've heard that fernet Branca is very popular shot in certain parts of the country and it's just like a really harsh herby licorice or not licorice peppermint flavor yeah. And it's like like rumble mints. Mm, no, not even like that. It's it's like have you ever had the original flavor Ricolas? Oh yeah. Oh. It's like that with peppermint in it. Oh, that's is what Fernet okay. Branca is. It's good. It okay. It's good. Like I feel like a shot would be the, f- the only way I would want that. One shot mm, and then done. It's good in other stuff. I've had it in a couple of drinks that I, I've I've liked, but it has to be like a, an immaculately balanced drink in order to like that flavor and it can overpower in an instant and same with jägermeister though like you don't see jägermeister in cocktails because it's overpowering it's herbs and licorice yeah and like i guess licorice isn't herb but like it it overpowers so people just take it as a shot and the marketing is very good, so people love it as a shot. Yeah, yeah, they do a good job of branding it. I mean, they make like the individual like mm-hmm. you just pull the lever and it pours a shot worth of it out of it. Yeah, they keep yeah. On bars all the time. Yeah, but it's funny. Like keeping a keeping a little home bar and like paying attention to this stuff is. I hate that I say it's funny as often as I do. Whenever I listen back to the episodes, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's funny, you just idiot. Stop saying it. But um, it is an interesting thing that. Like Jägermeister, and I would say another drink that I really like, a uh, liquor that I really like, Chartreuse, are fairly similar. They're both very overpowering tastes, um, herby and spicy and s- sweet. They're both sweet. But Jägermeister, even though it's about the same price, I think, per ounce or whatever, is way more popular than Chartreuse. People don't even know what Chartreuse is. I've asked at liquor stores. If you guys carry chartreuse and they're like, I've never heard of it. <laughs> well, I mean, like, for me, I love Jaeger, but I hated the taste of chartreuse. You did? Really? Yeah, it was not a fan. Mm, I love it so much. Nah, not, not for me. I don't have a bottle of it right now. I'm really sad. Some of my favorite drinks use chartreuse, too. There's very few cocktails that I've had with chartreuse in it that I haven't liked. I love that stuff so much. Need to get, I need you to oh. get like one of the uh, the wood chip smokers for the, to set on top of the glass. You put the wood chips in and you burn them to put the yeah. smoke in the glass. I need you to do like that and then make me like a crazy old fashioned. I was watching. Uh, I don't even think. You don't even need to do that. You could just you just need something to burn the wood on and then you place the glass over it. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely can do it that way. They just they make like these pucks that you can use. Yeah, it seems unnecessary. I don't know. Seems about the same amount of necessary as something to put the wood on. Like either way you gotta buy something. Unless you're just putting have, it on. I have stone yeah. coasters. Yeah. 
You could go to Home Depot and buy a countertop and just get a countertop sample for free. And that's something to burn the wood on. Yeah, (laughs) true. Hey, what you got next? Top five best snacks. You're going to struggle, aren't you? (laughs) You hate you hate favorites. I love I love that you're like, I am really struggling coming up with something for this. And you had a top five on your oh. on your thing. Like you, you were saying, like you were worried about time. Anytime we have a top five thing, we take way too long on it. Yeah, but the top five is just going to be like, bam, 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 bam. So. All right. Number one. I, I, I have a number one, at least we could we could leapfrog this. OK. Uh, cheese sticks. What does that mean? That cheese like, sticks like string cheese, like a cheese stick. Oh, okay. Number yeah. one. That's my number uh, one. Like, I like immediately jump to like cheese doodles. Oh, no. I would have said cheese doodle. Yeah. Yep. Just like your, you know, your regular cheese stick. There's just something about a cheese just stick cheese. and like pulling it apart and eating. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. Ugh. Just so I satisfying like to eat. Yep. Uh, For me, it is uh, kettle cooked potato chips. Just plain. Uh, okay. It's just, it's just salty, crunchy. Crunchy is one of my favorite flavors. Crunchy is your favorite flavor? Is one of them. It's um, it's just so good. It's it's a salt delivery mechanism. True. Oreos. Mm, that's a good choice. Oof. Double stuffed Oreo dipped in milk. Oh, man. Mm, lost me. You don't no like double milk? stuff. No double stuff? No double stuff. Fins Ooh. are the best ones. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Oh, then you're not getting enough stuffing. Good. The cookies are the best part. I like the cookies, but there needs to be balance, and the thins are not balanced. There's way too much cookie. Not enough stuffing. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> I'm allowed to be wrong. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a poll. Who's right and who's wrong? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I like... Love- no, I don't like I don't like this. I don't like I don't like I like stay so far away from popular culture that whenever I like enter it to see how weird my tastes are, I don't like it. I feel like a different <laughs> I feel like a different type of human. Whenever yeah, you I, just don't make sense. Yeah. Nah, like cookies I, are the best part of the Oreo, though. I'll stick by it. I like them. <laughs> I just, there just needs to be balance. OK, I want if we do this poll, I, I will consent to this poll if we do it. What's the best part of the Oreo, the filling or the cookie? I will. Oh, because I'll agree with you. It's the cookie, but it needs to be yeah. balanced for me to enjoy it. The balance is uh, it's more the double cookie to... because there's because du- there's two cookies and that one thin layer of stuffing is not enough. Mm, there needs to be more cookie to stuffing. Oh, so here here's what the poll would be. If you were at the store in the cookie aisle and you're looking at the Oreos, are you picking Fine. original, double stuffed or thin? Fine. You, uh, there has to be a fourth option, which is any batshit thing that Oreo decided to put out that week. Oh, to be honest with you, I, I bought Neapolitan ones to try this time, and they're not good. This is yeah, the first. Man. This is the first one I've gotten that I didn't care for. The the wild Oreo flavors are exactly that. They're wild. I, I think I had like the cinnamon ones. The oh, so I can talk the about the carrot this. cake ones were good. Carrot cake ones are fire. Yeah. But so you're the only other person in the world that knows about this story. So mm-hmm. I, this is perfect for the show. So once upon a time, is my mother the... was at a store yeah. and she bought I a bag of sun chips and they were cinnamon flavored sun chips. And they were the best fucking sun chips that me they and were so good had ever eaten in our life. I mean, we fucking destroyed this bag of sun chips and they've never been available ever again. Never seen them in the store. Uh, like to the point where we're all, I'm almost convinced my mom made the bag and made they the chips. exist. They, I've I just never looked it up. I've never anywhere. looked it up before. I've never looked it up ever before. I Can just looked them? it up. You could buy them on Amp. Well, hold on. That link looks like it was broken. Let's see here. I'm telling you, I, I'm pretty sure I looked it up mm. on Amazon before and they don't exist. Like you can't buy them. OK, I, but they are on Sun Chips website. Oh, wait, what is this? Taquitos.net. That's the serious snacker. This is a snack review site. <laughs> yeah, this I'm man tried. Right now, this too. man had them. The Way Snack Machine Cinnamon Sun Chips. Oh, man, they were just so good company. For them. I just... OK, they they existed, though. I, I can find pictures of them. 
Yeah, they existed, and they were the best fucking chip I've ever had in my life. Sun Chips sweeten up summers with the launch of new cinnamon flavor August 8th, 2007. This is a press release. Sun Chips, Frito-Lay's popular brand of multigrain snacks, today announced the launch of a new sweet flavor in two varieties, Sun Chips Cinnamon and Sun Chips Cinnamon 100 Calorie Mini Bites. Unlike other Sun Chips snacks, the new cinnamon flavor variety provides 18 grams of whole grain per one ounce serving not important no why do i need why do i need grains no nope. i mean this is They're it's just, just this is proof that they existed 2007 they existed once yes like their their line of running was so short that i never was able to find them ever again never saw them ever again we had them and they were so good that we immediately saw looked for them the next time we went to a, a, a store, store, whatever, Walmart, that's the word. <laughs> and yeah, never saw them. Nope. So there's another unicorn in the snack game. Yeah. And I found it once when I was living down south and Oreos made a breakfast Oreo. And it was white Oreo cookies with the cream filling with fruity hey. pebbles inside the filling. And hmm. they were the best Oreos I've ever had in my life. Sounds interesting. Because I don't know if it was because they were, the Fruity Pebbles were covered in the Oreo cream, but they didn't leave that like disgusting film in your mouth. Mm-hmm. So it's like you dip that in milk, and it was just like you were eating a cookie and a spoonful of Fruity Pebbles all at once. Oh, so good. And yep, found that once, crushed the whole box, never saw them again. <laughs> I look every time I go to the store. I glance down the cookie aisle, even if I'm not going to buy any other cookies. I go there just to see if by chance... There's a box of them. Yeah. I forget what they were called. Fru- Fruity Crisp. Fruity Crisp Oreos. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm pulling up a, okay. a picture to put in. I feel like we need to start a change.org um, thing f- to bring back cinnamon sun chips. Yeah, I'm um, all for that and these. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Oreo does not look in the rear view mirror. They are full no. steam ahead. I know. It's so sad because these ones are so good. Like, no, don't. Who cares about mystery flavor? Just give me the fucking fruity crisp ones back, please. Yeah, right. I would. I would gladly trade. Um, Get your red velvet bullshit out of here. Yeah, right. Red velvet is the stupidest flavor. It's just red chocolate, literally. Yeah. Yep. Dumb. The only right. reason it's like what are we big, doing? Like different is because just got the cream mostly, cheese. Yeah, it's filling. Ac- accompanied by cream cheese frosting. Sure. That was really yeah. the big thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll back with our snacks. So Oreos was my second one. Um, I don't know. Uh, Little Debbie uh, strawberry shortcake rolls. Oof. That's a solid choice. <laughs> so good. That is dangerous. Absolute. Dangerous. Uh, I uh, got them for like a snack at work once or twice, mm-hmm. and I stopped getting them because I'll just eat them all in like two days. Yep. Every one of them. Yeah. 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 See, for me, it would be the nutty buddy bars. A little that means the peanut butter chocolate ones. Mm. Okay. Oh, brother. Yeah, I don't care for a lot of little Debbies, I think. I don't either. There's I'm a that. hostess. I'm a hostess boy. Like I like snowballs. Um I really like the iced honey buns but i I hate honey buns uh, so i liked the honey buns for a minute there i was getting like a honey bun in the morning when i would drive past the convenience store on my way to work and then one day i looked at the back of them and realized that those motherfuckers are 560 calories yep it's all sugar i could i was like I like looked at it. I like cleaned my glasses, looked at it again. 560 calories. They got smaller recently too. They, yep. This, it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever, I'd ever encountered. But so I stopped eating those. Um. <laughs> well, it's like the same thing. as like the classic cinnamon roll from Cinnabon. Oh God. Cinnabon. I was like, yeah, that's, that's brutal. Those things are just like outrageous when it comes to that. So like, a classic single Cinnabon, 880 calories. Hot damn. <laughs> like, good God. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, um, what does is, what is, uh, Jim Gaffigan say? I don't know if I should eat this or sit in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think my next one, white cheddar popcorn. Good choice. I love some white cheddar popcorn. Something fierce. Good choice. Hmm. Um, 
nuts. <laughs> that's a solid choice. I'm actually yeah. gonna run. Yeah, that's 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 good. Is there a specific like favorite of the nuts that you enjoy? Not really. Peanuts are like near the bottom of the list. My favorite list of nuts. But like other than that, no nuts is just good. Yeah, give me I a like, give me I a like pecan roasted, cashew. But yeah, mm. I would much rather have. I think a cashew or a walnut. Yeah, is my go to. Macadamia nuts are good. Um, um, pistachios are okay. Maybe it was just diamond almonds that had a like lightly chocolated almond. Yeah, those are good. Those are good. Like an almond that doesn't have too much chocolate on it is so good. Yeah. My I, last one's going to be a little probably odd. You wouldn't think it would be in there, but okay. can be carrots with ranch dressing. Yeah, that's good. Oh, man, that just fucking slaps. I mean, really anything mm. like baby carrots, like in celery. Yeah. Any of that. I think I'll I think I'll actually follow you on that and go with celery. Yeah. Oh man, my favorite thing is like for Thanksgiving or like a lot of holidays, my aunt or my mom will make celery stuffed with cream cheese with like paprika on it. Mm. Oh man, that's so good. It's like just a just you a like, little. You like an ants on a log? Do I like a what? An ants on a log? Yeah, they're okay. I just don't like peanut butter as much as I do cream cheese. Um, uh, okay, I get that. But yeah, also good. Mm. Um, okay, so now we're gonna move into. I got three more questions before we wrap up. Okay, best. Or favorite entree? Just in general or in like general. a specific one? Uh, No, not like at a specific place. I'm just saying like overall entree, like, you know, chicken Alfredo or uh, a steak or, you know, if you can pick any single entree from anywhere. I or... will give two different answers for this. Okay. Um, Nicole makes a stuffed chicken that is like, it's, it's chicken stuffed with feta and spinach that that's fantastic. wrapped in bacon. Oh, and it is so good. I have uh, tried to convince her like we should have this like every couple of weeks, but it ends up turning into like we have it when people come over after we've had it, haven't had it for a while. Guess what? Um, so I'm that's gonna, good. Nicole, <laughs> I'm going to request that when I come over next time. <laughs> we need that and a it. cheesecake. Yeah. That and a yeah. cheesecake. All right. That'll I'll I'll tell her that because she may not listen to this by the time you you come. Um, <laughs> but my general answer that I will give is a Reuben, a Reuben sandwich. Yeah, um, that is like one of my yardstick meals. OK, if I go to a restaurant, and they have a Reuben. I'll order it to sort of gauge the quality of the restaurant. OK, you know what I mean? See, I would say I do the same. But for me, it's chicken Alfredo. Mm. like because there it's like if you can't make a good alfredo sauce you can't do anything right that's i think that's tough though because alfredo can be made so many different ways like it's not just one thing i guess that applies to everything but yeah, like but like a, a a good alfredo sauce you're right yeah yeah it, like, whether it's like, made with pecorino or parmesan yeah. or well, i mean the main thing is like the consistency and it not breaking. consistency of it so, like, sure. i got it from one place around here and after five minutes of it cooling down all the butter separated and i just had these pools of butter in my pasta and it was disgusting wow. and i was like yeah i'm not going to finish this i'm literally going to shit myself later if i eat this <laughs> like, like it looks like you just took two sticks of butter and just stuffed them in the center of the pasta and yeah, let them melt. right <laughs> like no i'm good uh yeah yeah the worst alfredo it no it wasn't an alfredo technically but there's a restaurant near us like the closest restaurant to our house that we were like ah oh, neat like it's right down the road <laughs> like we'll go there and we'll try it and it was awful both yeah. times that we went the first time that we went we like got some it's like Greek kind of. Yeah. Um, it must be like a Greek family that owns it, right? So there's some quasi Greek dishes on there. Yeah. I got one and it was okay. And Nicole got another and it was not great. And this, we went again. We were like, well, we'll give them a second try. We won't get those things that we ordered the first time. The thing that I got was still just okay. Nicole ordered a buffalo chicken uh, mac and cheese, right? Oh, buffalo mac and cheese. How do you mess that up? <laughs> That's what we were thinking. We're like, we'll go safe. She, we'll go safe. She ordered buffalo mac and cheese. How do you mess it up? It's mac and cheese. Put some hot sauce on it. Yeah, they first... didn't use like cheese. It was blue cheese. Ugh. It was a blue cheese mac and cheese. Oh, God. With hot sauce on it. 
not made into a sauce. So the hot sauce and the like cheese sauce set was separating and it was just awful. And we never went back again. Can you imagine if the place that we got catered for my parents' anniversary party made a buffalo chicken mac and cheese? Oh, that would be so good. God, that mac and cheese was so good. <laughs> it was. We had an entire tray of it left over. I ate a bunch of it. <laughs> Dangerous. That's dangerous. I mean, I didn't eat it like all that day. Well, sure, but still. But, like, like over the course of the next week, I would have like a small bowl of it. But it's like restaurant mac and cheese. That small bowl was probably your daily calorie intake. Oh, yeah. No, I no, I mean, I didn't take that much home with me. It was like less, <laughs> less yeah. than like a yogurt cup full. You know what I mean? Not like. a Yeah. Cup, yeah. You know? But man, <sighs> it was good. Mm, yeah. So next on the agenda is best appetizer. You're going to a restaurant mm. and just say you're 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 at a restaurant. And you open instead of opening a menu, you open your brain for any any and every appetizer you've ever had and you can order it. What are you getting? What's your favorite appetizer? I'm going to cheat on this one a little bit too, because it's either loaded fries, like a good loaded fries. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm going for. Like Tully's? Like Tully's loaded fries. Yeah. The two cheesy ones. Mm -hmm. I should probably tell that story in a minute. But, or um, the (laughs) chicken wonton tacos from Applebee's. That's It's like, it's the best thing on Applebee's menu. It is the one thing that I will go to Applebee's for. (laughs) <laughs> yeah uh, but they they're very very good i couldn't can't say that there's anything that makes me want to go to applebee's yeah ever. no they're not good enough that it makes me want to go to applebee's but if someone else wants to go to applebee's i'll probably get these things yeah it's a saving grace yeah that's how i am i get the the four cheese uh penne mac and cheese when i go mm. mm-hmm. it's like kind of the same thing can't really fuck it up yeah no josh can uh Loaded fries be too cheesy. Um, I don't know. Why don't you tell the story and we'll find out. I thought it was your story. What do you mean? It's your story. You heard you heard it, didn't you? Yeah, but I was just gonna let you. You gonna let me tell your story? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> so Josh here it's coming coming from your your recollection. Yeah, Josh here comes to me and he's like, "So I was in Syracuse with my girlfriend, his his ex girlfriend, but his girlfriend at the time, and we were." At Tully's because we're in Syracuse (laughs) and uh, it's like a sports bar and someone ordered these like loaded fries and they have great loaded fries. They come with their house ranch. That's just amazing and like sour cream and just loaded with cheese and bacon. And Josh tells me Mm. chives. Josh tells me that he hear he overhears from another table. This lady call over the waitress and go i'm sorry these loaded fries are just too cheesy and she (laughs) picks up a fry that's loaded with cheese and she holds it up to the waitress and she goes would you want to eat this and josh tells me the waitress says ma'am my friends and i fight over fries like those (laughs) because yeah you can't have too cheesy you can't have too cheesy no oh man it's, it's so, so it's good. So good. I still tell that story in my in my life. It reminds me of that, like when I picture replay that in my head. I, all I picture is like the remember that one fry. Remember when we were coming <laughs> back from Warp Tour with Mike and Krista, and we stopped at that one restaurant, and you picked up this fry, <laughs> and it was longer than your entire face. No, I don't remember anything about that. I don't know oh, why. Oh man, I still I, think have I was the- just so tired. I still have the picture on Facebook, but it's like you're holding up this fry and it's literally longer than your entire head. And I'm just hold, <laughs> like, that's the fry that she held up. And it just had like, just imagine if you took like a half a block of cheese and melted it and wrapped it around a fry and then just stuffed mm. bacon into it. Gorgeous. And, oh, it was. I'm like, uh, it was so good. So those are quality choices by you. For me, there, I'll also give two. Mm-hmm. Um, my generic choice his mozzarella sticks. Yeah, sure. Because they're fucking great. But, dude, it's hard to beat a good spinach and artichoke dip. Ooh, there's a restaurant, I think it's a chain, but a restaurant around here that uh, makes, like, the best spinach artichoke dip. Oh, I love it. When you get in, like, they bring it out in one of those skillets. Mm. And it's just like... This one comes in a bread bowl. Ooh. 
That's yeah. Good. Oh, that's another underrated fucking snack too. The the bread bowls with like the dill dip in it with like the mm-hmm. rye bread. Oh, that's a great snack. But I don't know yeah. if I've ever had that or if I would care for it, but yeah, I, I bread bowls just in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much. So yeah, uh, spinach and artichoke dip. I just I love. Hell that's, yeah. That's I, that's something I do get every time I go to App- Applebee's because like you really can't mess mm. that up. Yeah, that is. That is good, even from Applebee's. Okay, so the last last little snippet for today or topic, best dessert. And I'm ice gonna cream. Sh- and I'm gonna shock you with my answer. It's ice cream. Yours is ice cream? Yeah. Like a specific ice cream or just ice no. cream all in general? Ice cream. Okay. It's too good. Mine is this, very this fry specific. Is long. Oh, you found the picture? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I told you it was massive. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesus, it pops up on my feed every year, like when, you know, really, like, yeah. this time, this time, not this many years ago. And I'm like, holy shit, that's a fucking large fry. <laughs> I'm like, where did they find a potato that big? <laughs> Apparently potatoes, big potatoes exist. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so mine is, uh, like I said, very, okay. very weird and very specific, but it is the lava cakes from Domino's. Hmm. Dude, they Interesting. are just so good. I, and I'm sure you can get them from other places and they're probably even better. But like, mm-hmm. that's the only place I've had them. And oh, man, like everything else from Domino's is just, eh, it exists, but it's not great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. But yeah, I've never things... had the Domino's from the, the Domino's from dessert. Yeah, these things. <laughs> so they have like the hard exterior yeah. shell and then like a little cakey layer and then just all that fudge and yeah oh my god i know what a lava cake is oh they're so um, good i um what was it that i was making for a while you know what i feel like lava cakes try are trying to emulate is mm-hmm. souffles yeah um you're supposed to like break open a souffle and pour some syrup into it or something like that like whatever served alongside of it I know yeah. this from cooking shows. I've never actually had like a professional souffle. <laughs> but um, there was a recipe that I was making for a little while. It was like a two ingredient souffle. It was Nutella and egg because a souf- you can't have a souffle without egg. And you would just like beat those up and cook it in a ramekin and it, like made a little souffle surrogate. And that was very good. So if you like this, if you have like mm-hmm. a hand mixer, you may want to try looking up that recipe to two ingredient chocolate souffle. I stopped mm. making them because I learned that Nutella has palm oil in it and apparently palm oil is not good after it's cooked, like not good for you after it's cooked, like mm. you can denature or something like that. So, but I never really, really looked into whether this would have been dangerous or not. I just sort of got lazy because yeah. you still have to break out your hand mixer. Yeah, or make enough of them to, to warrant using your stand mixer. <laughs> No, no, you can't. You can't really do that. It was it was like a single serving recipe. It was like one egg and enough Nutella to match one egg. And you can't really because it's whipped. You can't really store and cook a souffle later. Like it'll just deflate and then won't cook the right way. Hmm. So it's not something it's something that you have to make as you want it. And make and eat it then. Yeah, that's I'm assuming why people don't really make souffles very often yeah. because they're like intensive was, and you have to do it all right then that would definitely make a lot of sense yeah well i think that's gonna wrap uh wrap us up for this week um if you enjoyed this episode you know go uh follow the link in the description join our discord you'll be able to follow yes. along with all the pictures and links and stuff we're talking about we update that every week um yes. kind of a little follow along for you um and obviously and, if you want to ask questions or anything you can do that in there as well yeah absolutely and hopefully with the lead time uh we'll be able to sort of be a little more active on social media so keep an eye on that too yeah definitely that's the plan and with that we'll take you to the uh intro take it away recorded Vinny. thank you and congratulations for making it to the end of this episode of Quirt on the street We have been your hosts, Vince and Josh. You can find us on our socials. You can find us on Twitter at Quirt on the Street, Q-U-O-R-D on the S-T. If you're listening to us on YouTube uh, slash Quirt on the Street, go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And wherever you're listening to us, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
or wherever you can leave a review. Please leave us a review. If you tell us what we can do worse, I promise I will read it on the podcast unless it's just too mean. If you have any need to contact us in a longer format, you can email us at courtonthestreet at gmail.com or you can visit us on our website, courtonthestreet.xyz. Feel free to leave us a voice message on there. If you want to reach out to us individually, you can get a hold of us at our personal Twitters. Mine is at I'm Scuzzy, I-M-S-K-U-Z-Z-E-Y. And I am at V underscore C, spell out the underscore. Uh, We would finally like to acknowledge the people that made this podcast happen. Uh, Josh Wardle, who is the original creator of Wordle. And Freddie Meyer, the creator of Quartle, who you can find on Twitter at Quartle. And with that, we will just ask you, as always, to get the the court court out. out.